aí, amigo? Tudo bem? Hey, Brasil Show! It's Bruce here. On a Sunday fun day, just got back from my family. Had a nice uh, Sunday lunch with the family. And came out here to the beach a little bit before the sun goes down. So, it's about, uh, what time is it? It's three something in the afternoon. So the sun's starting to go down early now. I guess we're coming into our uh, fall season here in South America. As you guys probably in the States and in Europe, above the equator, you guys are heading into spring. So it's getting a little dark, starting to get dark around 5.30 or so. Get a little taste of the beach. Beaches and all that packed today. It's a nice day though, it's about I'm probably around 80 degrees. 80 degrees, little hazy. It's probably crowded earlier, but like it's people starting to go home now. Oh. This is a Praia of Baja de Tijuca. In Rio de Janeiro. The Baja de Tijuca is located in Zona West. We say Zona Oeste of Rio. Whereas most of the tourist areas that you guys know about, Copacabana and Ipanema, that's Zona Sul. I'm about 30 minutes from there. Get a lot of tourists here too, but mostly the tourists that come to this area are coming from other parts of Brazil other parts of South America. I mean, we do get some people from North America, from Europe also, especially down further. As you see here, this is Postal, Postal Setch, Postal 7. So this area here is not as touristy as down further. But down further, Postal 3, really Postal 1. You have uh, K8. Caioito, uh, Praia de Pepe, those are the real touristy areas. But we do have a lot of hotels here. So a lot of these buildings here are hotels. These are two right here. And then a lot of, a lot of condominiums. Baja's not that old of a, uh, neighborhood. It's really only been the last 20 years that it's kind of grown up. When I first started coming to, to Brazil, most of this stuff didn't even exist. Oh, so I got a lot of questions people have been asking me, so I guess I'll take care of that now do a little question and answer while I'm here. Pull out my phone. Let's see. Find a place to post up. Maybe I should walk out on the beach. Get some of these questions and answers that I've been receiving. First question. Well, no, that's not it. Let me go to a different email. Yeah. Don't want to get a strike. Okay, here we go. What is the best time of year to visit Rio de Janeiro for good weather and fewer fewer tourists. That would be right now. After Carnival, um, Carnival changes every year. Sometimes it's in early February, mid-February. Next year it's going to be in March. So it has to do with the timing of Easter or Lent. So, but after Carnival and until May or so, the weather is perfect. It's not so hot. If you've been to LA, it's kind of like LA weather right now. 
that we do get some rain not as much as during the summertime during the summer it rains a lot during our our summer which is um, December through uh, well, November through February the summer get a lot of it's really hot but we get a lot of rain right now we don't get so much rain we do get some nice days but I say right now it's the best time to come from whenever carnival ends every year give it like two weeks after that and then go into May and you'll get some nice weather there won't be a lot of tourists here okay um, question number two can you recommend any hidden gems in Rio that are off the beaten path and not overrun by tourists there's quite a few I'm not gonna give all of my spots away <laughs> Uh, one place I would recommend um, and this, is, this, this also ties into another question somebody was asking uh, are there any day trips or getaways from Rio so my number one getaway and off the beaten path would be Bujus Bujus is a resort town it's about two hours outside of Rio um, they have buses that go there luxury buses or you can take a passenger van takes about two hours to get there and it's just paradise I'll put, see if I can put some video up from there um, you can rent dune buggies you can ride horses they have uh, shopping real this street called Hua dos Pedras in street of street of uh, stones uh, beautiful women beautiful clubs to go to during the, but during the off season it's really slow during the summertime, I would recommend going during the summer when it's uh, high season. It gets way too crowded. So, and the other place I would recommend off the beaten path and to get out of the city would be Angra dos Hayes. And it's about two hours in the opposite direction of Bougie. I don't want to get this techno. I guess I won't get no strike for this. Yeah, Angra dos Hayes, just about two hours in the other direction. It's the same kind of vibe, like a tropical paradise type of vibe, real, real relaxing vacation. But then again, don't go there during the high, the high uh, tour season because it gets super crowded. <laughs> okay. Next question: Are there any specific neighborhoods in Rio where I should look for an accommodation to get an authentic experience? The neighborhoods, I would suggest, there's some neighborhoods, uh, like, so if you don't speak Portuguese, it would be kind of difficult. But I would say Santa Teresa is a, is a really cool neighborhood. I know there's some cool Airbnbs you can find up there in Santa Teresa. Um, another part of Rio that would be cool would probably be Flamengo. Uh, lots to do and that's a real not a touristy neighborhood at all but it's close to you know the rest of the town uh, Lapa I wouldn't suggest staying in Lapa some people would but I think it's just too janky over there but that's those are two places where you'll you know you'll meet up with a lot of locals and uh, just get a real more a real more local experience than just being around tourists. Okay. What are the must question number I guess it's question number three. What are the must try local foods in Rio and where can I find the best versions of these dishes? So I had a question in my in my community chat asking about what did you guys prefer? If it was your last meal, what would you eat? Chuhashko or uh, seafood and most of you put Brazilian barbecue so definitely you're gonna have to check out the Chuhascorias that's the, the barbecue places <laughs> and uh, I just got off track so yeah you want to check out the Brazilian barbecue places um, man there's quite a few of them around Rio and I really can't think of the name. I'm like tongue-tied for names, but they're all over the place. 
food is not a problem. Any neighborhood you, you're, you're in, you're gonna find good food. That's, that's a given in Rio. Let's see, question number four. How easy is it to navigate public transportation in Rio? And are there any tips for first time visitors? So the only public transportation I would take as a tourist would be the metro, which you say the subway. Other than that, I wouldn't take the bus, never take the bus. It's uh, a lot of janky stuff happens on the buses. So the metro is easy to get, get access to. If you have a tap to pay on your phone, you just use that to, to pay your, uh, to get on. You don't have to buy a ticket or anything. And that'll get you from Zona Sul to Central to Baja de Tijuca. And then, um, like where I live, you're normally I'll take I'll take a Uber to the metro station. If I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna go to Central to the city, the the center of the city, I'll take a Uber to the metro station, and then from from there I'll take the metro to the center of the city. It's way faster than taking an Uber. Because it, it cuts right through the mountains, goes underneath everything. It gets there in about 30, 30 to 40 minutes, whereas the Uber would take a lot longer because there's a lot of traffic. A lot longer and be a lot more expensive. Let's see, what's another question? What are some tips for experiencing Rio de Janeiro on a budget without missing out? on the city's highlights. Really, to be honest with you, you don't have to spend a lot of money in, in Rio to have a good time. Uh, a lot of stuff, I mean, you come to the beach, it's basically what you pay for, you wanna sit on the sand. See these right here, let me point it out, hold on, son. Hold on a second. Okay, these are called Bajacas. This is this is Bahaka Jid, Bahaka da VV. So you rent a chair and umbrella for, from them. It'll be about 20, 25 hay ice, about five dollars. That's for the day. And then they'll sell drinks. You know, if you want caipirinha, you want uh, agua de coco or anything. If you want food, you can order food. They'll get the food from these kiosks here and they'll bring it down to you. Or if you just if you don't want to be on the beach and you just want to come here and chill at one of these kiosks, you just come here and chill at the kiosks. And then that would be cool. Let's see if these you can get a full meal. You can get beef, chicken, fish, whatever you want. A lot of the places like you saw before they have live music on the weekends. Let's see. Let me take a look at the menu. Okay. So this is their menu. So picanha, which is uh, uh, beef, uh, beef shank, rice, beans, and French fries. Fifty hay ice. That's ten dollars. And then throw in a couple drinks. About another 20 hay ice. So $15. And you could eat a big meal like that, you could eat once or twice a day. I'm I'm a I'm old mad. I eat once a day. So I'll eat like one big meal and I'm good. I really don't spend a lot of money. And then that takes me to the next question. How much does it cost to live in Brazil? Can you get by on 2000 a month? Yes, very much so. <laughs> you can live a really good life in Brazil on $2,000 a month, really good life. Um, let me show you something here. So I live in, oh, let me point out this plot of land right here. This plot of land right here just sold for three hundred eighty four million dollars and it's been sitting there for it's been sitting there empty for 
15 years. The, the family that owned it, it, it was left by an old rich guy, left it to his family, um, sons and daughters. And so they finally sold it to some, congl some conglomerate that's going to build a condominium, self-contained condominium uh, place. So they bought the land for 384 million U.S. I think, that, I think there's eight people in the family. You're gonna split that up. You can do the math. But anyway, see these condos here? So I'm not gonna tell you where I live, but I live in one of these condos. My apartment faces the ocean. I have a two bedroom apartment facing the ocean. I have maid service three times a week. I have a doorman 24 seven. Nobody can just walk up. And I pay a thousand dollars a month for rent. And so my, uh, my other expenses, my electricity. Since I live at the beach, I, re I rarely ever turn on my air conditioning unless it just gets super hot. Most, most of the time, because here, here in Baja, we get a really strong ocean, um, ocean breeze. So it, it gets actually kind of cold in my apartment, even on hot days. It could be 20 degrees hotter in, in the interior. So I rarely turn on my air conditioning. So my electric bill is about $30 a month. My internet, I have the, I have the fastest internet um, service that's possible. Uh, my internet is under here, $20 a month. $20 a month. So I got my internet when they had a, a special plan going. It probably, I think it runs out this year, so I'll probably, it'll probably go up to like 120, 140 a month. Well, um, 140 KI, so it'll probably go up another five to five dollars or so. Five to ten dollars a month. So I'm paying like about twenty dollars a month right now for internet service. Um, what other expenses do I have? Got um, electricity, I got that, thirty dollars a month. I got my internet, oh, my phone. My phone, I have like the most basic phone plan because I never really talk on the phone unless I'm using WhatsApp. Um, so my phone, I pay 50 hey ice a month, which is about $10, $10 a month. Um, I don't have unlimited minutes, but like I said, I don't really talk on the phone, so. If I'm in the house, I just use Wi-Fi and I go on WhatsApp. If I'm out in the street, you gotta grab an Uber and stuff. So, I mean, I've never run out of minutes. Uh, what else, what other things? Oh, food. Like I said, I, I, uh, I eat one meal a day. I normally cook my own meals. So, and then I'll go out maybe once a week. So to go to a real nice restaurant, like to go out, take a girl out, and go have a really nice meal, that will be around 350 to 400 hay ice. So around 60, 70 dollars. That's once a week, times four. And then my regular food bill, I get my food from the uh, the farmers market, the outdoor the outdoor farmer's market where you get all the fresh food. None of it's, uh, it's all organic. Uh, I get chicken, I get my vegetables, fruit. It is so cheap. I'll spend about 150 hay ice a week on food, on, the, on the shopping for groceries. So let's say six, that's 600 hay ice a month, and, uh, $120. And then plus going out, say I go out once a week on a date or something, that's another 60 or $70 a week. And then you got that up, how much is that? So I got a thousand, a thousand for my rent. I have 30 for my electric, that's a thousand thirty. I have 20 for my internet, thousand fifty. I have uh, 60 times four, Say going out on a date, that's uh, 15 times four, 240. And then uh, phone bill, 20, uh, $10 a month. And the rest of it, 
So yeah, like I said later, I live in one of these condos, right? Not this one, but my condo faces the ocean. I get this view every morning. So, and that's, and I, I live on the high end. You can live a lot cheaper. You can pay a lot less rent than what I pay. You can get a place for, well, let me let this music pass by. You're not home together. pay a lot less rent you can find a place so if you want to find a studio a bachelor pad you can get something for around five six hundred dollars a month not in this area it'll be in a you know more in the in the city like area like uh, Flamengo Botafogo maybe Copacabana I wouldn't suggest living if you're gonna come here to live I mean it's been some spend some real time here. Copacabana would be the last place I would tell you to live. Because all you're gonna get is a tourist experience there. You're gonna get you're gonna pay the tourist tax on everything you do. You're gonna meet a lot of janky people because if you're not the people that speak English there, they're running gang in that part of town. So like I said, if you want to come here and you want to stay six months, so much you can stay on a on a on a visa, or not even on a visa. Just that's not, I don't even know if they're gonna start the visa thing over again. But you're allowed to stay six months out of the year without getting a permanent visa. Um, yeah, I would say look for like Flamengo, um, Botafogo. I used to live in Ipanema. I lived in Ipanema for eight years. Back then it was cheap. My, my rent was ridiculous. I lived one building off the beach and I paid about $450 a month in rent. <laughs> oh man, those were the good old days. Oh, one more question. How did I learn Portuguese? So, I learned Portuguese before I ever stepped foot in Brazil. I had two great friends that lived in LA. They were a Brazilian couple. They were exchange students. And we became best of friends. So they taught me Portuguese. And they're actually the ones that got me into the whole Brazilian culture. Uh, they introduced me to all the Brazilian people in, in LA where I'm from. And so when they moved back to Brazil, they invited me to come with them, which I did. And I knew the basics when I got here. You know, I could I could pretty much walk around by myself. I wasn't conversational, but I had enough Portuguese to just move around. Um, and then learning Portuguese also is, you know, you, you take these courses and stuff, it's totally different when you get here because people don't speak like how they teach you on these courses. They speak a lot faster, they use a lot of uh, slang. Uh, you meet people from different parts of Brazil in Rio and each one has their own vernacular the way they speak And so you have to get used to that So my whole thing when I moved here when I actually moved here Permanently and it's been I've been here for 20 years. I made it a point to stay away from anybody who spoke English So I just wanted to be around people that spoke Portuguese so after that, it took me about three months to get fluent. I remember the day I told my first joke, I was in a group of friends, uh, Brazilian friends, and I told a joke and everybody laughed. And so then I knew I could speak Portuguese <laughs> when they were laughing at my jokes. So he's teaching her foot volley. 
foot volley is basically volleyball, except you can't use your can't use your hands. You can use any part of your body except your hands and your arms. Man, it's a gorgeous day. Yeah, I think I'm gonna walk out here. Get a little beach. Yo, check out these ants. Check this out. It's like some Nat Geo shit. Check that out. These ants are super strong, man. You step on them and they don't crush. They just laugh at you like, what? <laughs> Talk to my people over here. Say Diola. <laughs> Diola, the football? No, 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 no. Ah, oh, no, so I'm going to come. Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's go. I was asking him, was, was he giving a class? He said, nah, he's just playing, playing around. The thing about here in Baja too is the, the current here is ridiculously strong. It's like not a place you want to come swimming. You really don't want to go more than waist deep. The undertow is really strong. The waves aren't really strong right now, but normally the waves are coming hard. There's normally a rescue here every weekend. Walk a bit down this way. Oh, and then so, and back to Portuguese. Um, my friend Vivi, who is in the, in the community post. So if you're interested in learning Portuguese, check her out, because she teaches online like with Zoom calls. Very affordable. I'll put another link in this video. Uh, she's a, a native of Rio de Janeiro. She's also a samba, they call it a muse. Musa, just kind of like a queen. It's not. It's like a step down from a queen, but she's with the the samba school of Mosidaji, and she teaches Portuguese online. Or if you have like a girlfriend or somebody, a boyfriend, whatever that needs to learn English here in Brazil, she teaches English also to Brazilians. So she can hook you up with that. And he's telling them to come back in because you can see that the, there's an undertow here. And he has that. Something come down. Oh, you know what? Carnival's not even over, guys. <laughs> We're coming up to, damn, water's coming up, folks. We're coming up to April. Today is the, the champions of Carnival Vitaduro are doing a special parade for their community. <clears throat> now, Vitaduro is actually not a Rio de Janeiro city. They're not from Rio de Janeiro. They're from Niteroi. So Niteroi is a different city. It's not real. It's in the state of Rio, 
but it's a different city. And they're having a, a parade, the whole, they're doing the whole thing with the floats and everything for the community there. I got invited, but it's kind of far. You have to take a boat across the bay to get there. And I'm kind of done with Carnival this year. I'm really not done. I have a lot, of, a lot more videos and photos and stuff to edit. Hey, Ah, Janeiro. Nada, Janeiro, Take pics também? No, nothing, nothing. Nothing, obrigado. He sells, uh, what do they call that drink? It's, it's lemonade and lemonade and, uh, and iced tea. There's a name for it. I forgot what you guys call that drink. They go around with those cans. They come around the beach. They charge like two hay ice. Here they call it match, match limon. Oh, guys! Another thing I want to tell you. So I'm opening up a the Brazil Show store. Got travel bags, duffel bags, uh, drawstring sacks t-shirts, bucket hats, flip-flops, anything you need for Brazil, I got it in the store. Go check it out. Get you two or three of them things. Help support the channel. This right here is classical, classical Baja. This is one of the hot spots here in Baja. You wanna meet girls, you wanna pick up spots here in this part of Baja. It's kind of tame right now, tame today. But during high season, it's like popping right here. Classical. But only if you like techno music, because that's all they play. One of my friends, she loves to come here. Down season. It's a good time to come down, right before the summer, before the prices start going up. September, October, November. This is Brazil! Oh.